This franchise continues to go on, even without James Wan there. And it's very obvious that James Wan's absence is felt. The Conjuring the Devil Made Me Do It is the newest addition to the Conjuring universe and it just came out in theaters as well as on HBO Max, which you can go watch right now. This movie stars Vera Farmiga, Patrick Wilson. It was directed by Michael Chavis, the guy who directed The Curse of La Llorona, uh, one of the worst horror films I think I've ever seen in my life. This is the story about how Ed and Lorraine Warren try to help this young man in his innocence as he is on trial for murdering somebody and he claims the devil did it. And they're out to prove that the devil truly did influence this young man Arnie to kill this man. I don't wanna rip this movie a new one because I honestly think that this movie is fun, but I also have a lot of issues with this film. I wanna go over the things that I did like about it though because I don't wanna say that this movie's terrible, it's, it's garbage. There are things about this movie that are redeeming. Number one, I like the fact that it wasn't a haunted house story again. We've gotten that with the first two Conjuring movies, and you could say that we've gotten that with every Annabelle movie so far. So being able to see maybe a more refreshing story in the Conjuring universe is a little bit nice. And yeah, of course there's gonna be those same jump scare type of hauntings and, and those terrifying demons that, that spawn out that the franchise has continued to do over, over the years and over time. But this movie doesn't have to play on this idea that it's one family locked in a house and all these weird creepy things start to happen. This movie feels more like a, a road trip adventure for the Conjuring universe, if that makes sense. Like there's things happening all over the place, in prison, obviously in houses, but also in the woods and stuff. Like it's kind of cool how much of a road trip type of atmosphere this movie has. I also liked the drama in this movie. Granted, it's the weakest of all of the Warren drama at the center of it, whereas the first movie you had Ed who was concerned about Lorraine. The second movie, Lorraine was seeing Ed's death and so she was concerned about him. And this third movie, it's that Ed is dealing with some medical issues as he's getting older, which happens. And also because of something that happens at the beginning of this movie that I'm not gonna spoil, but I liked that. However, it definitely felt weaker. But again, I do like the, the war and drama because you are so invested in these characters because they've been around since the beginning of this franchise. And even though not every single movie in this franchise has the Warrens included, but you always feel their presence no matter what the movie is. The last thing I like about this movie is that at times I felt like this movie was fun horror. There were two moments from this movie that truly were terrifying. There are two instances in this film where I was chilled completely. I was like, wow, that's great horror. And it was something unique and a little bit different that I, I didn't really think I had seen before. Like it mixed a lot of different stuff together in one, but there's also those same things that we've gotten from every single Conjuring movie. And I would even say like the Insidious movies. There's a lot of things about this movie that reminds me of Insidious. And that to me kind of felt annoying because Michael Chavis, even though this is his direction, this is his film, there are a lot of moments where I feel like he kind of tries to play it off as what James Wan would do. And you could tell that it's just not authentic and not true to who he is as a filmmaker. Getting into the negatives, this movie has horrible, horrible lighting. It's one of the worst lit films I've ever seen. And the theater I will say was worse than actually like it's streaming on HBO Max, but I don't understand how it was still so dark. You can't see anything. This movie would have been probably even better if I could see what was on screen half the time. There's so many things in the shadows and they use a lot of natural light, but they don't use anything outside of natural light sometimes. And you can see that because it just looks like a black screen. And that's kind of frustrating because I know what they were going for. I know you don't want to make it feel Hollywood, but I feel like that is Hollywood by trying to do that because you're taking away the artistry behind what actually is happening on screen. Like we can't see anything. There's probably great stuff that we couldn't see. Another problem with this movie is that, like I said, you can really feel that James Wan's presence is not here. Michael Chavis 
hey, he's trying, he's putting out something that I think is kind of fun. And I'm looking forward to seeing what type of original content he could do in the horror genre. But you can tell that he's a much more amateur filmmaker from the likes of James Wan. It just didn't feel like the other Conjuring movies. And to me, I, I knew that that was going to be the case going in. And I was a little skeptical and I was hoping that that wasn't going to be the case and that, you know, it's fine. It's a, it's a Conjuring movie. Like I'm going to, I'm going to feel it. It's going to all work out. But now I kind of feel like we're getting the insidious treatment where James Wan did the first two insidious movies and then other directors came on board to do the other two insidious movies. And although insidious chapter three was not bad, the last movie is atrocious and so i'm a little worried that this is where we're going in the same direction with what insidious was doing for the conjuring universe which should be in my opinion a little bit better since this is a broadened universe and my last thing here this is a nitpick and this is something that i said even before the movie even came out i hate the fact that they go from the conjuring the conjuring 2 to the conjuring the devil made me do it i'm a continuity person it's like a, such a stupid nitpick and it's really like a pet peeve of mine, but I hate when franchises that have been using Conjuring, Conjuring 2, you'd assume it'd be Conjuring 3, which should have been the actual title, when they change it up and decide to have like a subtitle. I don't know, it just kind of bothers me. That's like a stupid nitpick and I know you guys are probably gonna hate me for saying that in the comment section, but I just, I like continuity and I just don't feel continuity with this title. Overall, it's a fun movie. I'm definitely gonna buy it on Blu-ray because I want to own most of the Conjuring movies, like the ones I'd watch again. Like I'd watch this movie again and have a fun time with it, but I, I, I don't really care a lot about what they were trying to give us, even though I'm happy it's not a haunted house movie. I still feel like this movie could have been so much better than what it was. But if you like the Conjuring universe, you like these characters, if you like horror in general, things that go bump in the night, definitely check out this movie, which is streaming right now on HBO Max. I think it, I think you can find some enjoyment out of it. Uh, I will have a Conjuring ranking up for tomorrow, so stay tuned for that. Let me know what you guys thought about The Conjuring, The Devil Made Me Do It. Have you guys seen it? Let me know down below in the comment section of this video. Subscribe to the channel for more content just like this. Hit that thumbs up button, give it a like. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll catch you guys in my next video. Bye.